Okay, hi everyone, so I'm SmithyQ, and I'm back today with a good old-fashioned game analysis. This one was going to be included in the series on opening principles versus opening traps, but I think it's so much more instructive than that. That is, the whole game deserves a look. It's going to feature a clash. And the clash is basically between this queen and the entire black army. As we know, in the opening, we're trying to develop our pieces. We're trying to castle, and we want to control the center. Those are the three primary tasks. The reason we don't develop our queen early is because, well, it can get attacked and get pushed around. This game is going to feature a clash. The black player, rated almost 2,500, sorry, rated almost 2,600, is going to be focusing on developing and focusing on time. It's a pretty good idea. Watch how white this entire game isn't focusing on developing. White is focusing on trying to win material from the very get-go. It starts right here, e5, played with less than a second. And just as an aside, these here are the two main moves. Almost nobody ever covers this e5 move, even though if you look at the statistics, white scores really well in online blitz with it. Why is that? Well, the first move is pretty obvious. Let's move the knight. We'll attack the queen, attack the pawn, all right? What do we do from here? In the game, black took the pawn. It's two pieces developed, life looks good. Uh-oh, f4. So knight's attacked, knight can't move because of the pin. Uh, how do we save our knight? I would like to suggest a different question. Again, the opening isn't necessarily about material. Sure, keeping material is nice. The focus is on time. It's on developing. How can we increase our lead in time? We have two pieces of develop. How can we do that more? Well, black started. d5 hits the queen, makes a lot of sense, prepares to develop our bishop, controls the center. If the queen does something silly, like moves over here, well, now our knight can you know, go anywhere. We're not losing a knight. Of course, white doesn't do that. White goes back. All right, we keep attacking the queen. Comes back. All right. Again, it's not necessarily how do we save our knight. It's how do we use our lead in time? How do we keep going? Now, I'm saying this rather generally. You do want to be calculating these things. But this is how you start calculating the right lines. How do we increase our lead in time? What about bishop b4 check? Developing a new piece, developing with tempo. C3, okay, now we have two pieces attacked, but don't worry, we're opening uh, lines, and okay, we still have two pieces attacked. What do we do? Again, it's very easy to be materialistic, to look at this and think that we are in huge trouble. Or we can look at this through the lens of uh, the opening principles. We have three pieces developed to um, white's, like, zero. He has no minor piece to develop. He's moved his queen out early. He's moved his queen multiple times. We're ready to castle. He isn't. There's an open e-file. In fact, there's a fully open center. His king is in mortal danger, if we can get to it. What do we do? How do we increase our lead in time? There's a couple of good ideas. Black ended up playing bishop to g4. Let's take a look. So just for the record, it's move 11. Black has all of his minor pieces developed. White has zero. There are two pieces that are being attacked. Completely hanging. So it seems that white has a choice. He can take a piece, take another piece, or he can do something to stop the coming uh, queen goes to d1, because that was the whole purpose behind this. That's what white did. In the game, white ended up playing bishop goes to d2. What would happen if he didn't? Let's check that first. Let's say he takes uh, the bishop. Well, that allows check. King moves. And, well, actually, this isn't that hard at all. Look, that bishop, it's sitting there. It's completely undefended. And if white takes this guy, well, guess what? Check. Now it's this rook that's undefended. King moves somewhere, say. And uh, before we take the rook, the rook's not going anywhere. Uh, let's save our bishop. Like, if we take the rook right away, well, then, you know, we're down. Let's see. White has two minor pieces. We got a rook and pawn. But instead, 
we can move the bishop out of the way, take the rook next move, and uh, we're simply up in exchange. Up material, still ahead in development. His king is off here in no man's land. I think black's doing fairly well. Yeah, black's winning. Okay. And funny enough, this exact same thing plays out if white, play, if white plays um, here and takes the other piece. It's identical. Very easy to calculate. We take this. Same thing. You take a piece. Doesn't matter. You've got check. We'll save our bishop. Pick up the rook. We're okay. Okay. Did you notice what happened there? Let me just back up. This entire time, white was trying to win material. Right? He's bought, he um, opened the e-file. He's put his queen on the e-file. He's kept his queen on the e-file. He's trying to win this piece. He's also trying to win this piece. Let's back up. Right? Even right here. He ended up taking with the pawn. So that way there's two pieces. That, like, he could have played knight takes c3. I mean, this piece is still attacked. He's still going to win some material, but he's developing a little bit. But instead, white played here. Zero development. Focusing entirely on winning material. And then black, by focusing on developing as fast as possible, well, as we saw, um, if white were to take material, he ends up losing material in the end. He's in a losing position. Why? Because it's that time, the, de um, the time element, it's development. That is the most important thing in the opening. And if you ignore that, you frequently end up like white. Well, bishop d2. Stopping, the queen goes to d1. And next move, white can take either piece that he wants. What do we do as black? In the game, black played f5. Another attempt to chase the queen. After the queen moves, we threw in this check on the king's diagonal, coerced g3, and then came back. Notice that by coercing g3, uh, now knight f3 is impossible, right? So that is backing up. Here, white, okay, white had, oh, I'm afraid. Uh, this is, uh, why is this so difficult? Let's just imagine that black played like a nothing move for a second. White had the option of playing f3 here and then recapturing with the g-pawn. By throwing in this check, now we're here. If white would ever play f3, well, that just loses because um, the g-pawn's not there to uh, defend anymore. So the whole point of throwing in this check and then coming to e7, this is what I'm trying to tell you, is to make um, white's development harder. Nevertheless, we're in this position and we still have two pieces hanging. It's white's to move. White's gonna, in the game, white took the knight. Okay. Black played bishop c5, moving the bishop away. Then he played knight takes e5. And now I have a challenge for you. I would like you to find a move for white. Notice a couple things. One, again, black is fully developed. And we have this e-file chasing his king. So this knight wants to move just about anywhere with a discovered attack. If you're to do something like bishop e2, looks like it makes a lot of sense. You want to trade a piece. Uh, whoops. Oh, no. The bishop is pinned, and you just lost your queen. Okay. The same thing with knight e2. Um, lose the queen. Uh, same thing with knight f3. You're going to lose the queen. Um, if you play h3, try and shoot. Guess what? Uh, you don't just lose the queen. You lose your king. This is checkmate. How do we not lose our uh, lose the game here as white? There's one move. If you notice, white actually finds the move. Good for white. Notice that white has four minutes on the clock. He then ended up playing bishop b5 check. So it took him a whole minute in a blitz game, 20% of his time, to find this. And the idea is uh, throws in the check. So that way now there's this f1 square. Play c6 and then king f1. So now there's no more discovery on the e-file. You, you have to do that. Again, if you were to move the, the bishop back somewhere, you lose the queen. Or, you know, um, you move the bishop here, same thing, discovery attack, you're losing the queen. You're just losing the game. And so in other words, in this position, sorry, in this position, white 
was compelled, the only way to keep playing is bishop b5, and then leave the bishop there to play king f1. Black, if I could do it properly, there we go, takes the piece. And if you look at the material count, black's actually up two pawns. And black is ahead in development, and he's got more control of the center, and he's got the safer king. It's almost as if white's trying to win material didn't work, and black's entire focus on developing was the correct strategy. And of course, it, it was. But I think this game, reaching this position, is just so incredible because it looks like black is going to lose material. Black is losing material, but it doesn't matter. The active pieces mattered so much more. Uh, the game doesn't last too much longer, and it's a really pretty finish. So let's just take a look at that quickly. White ends up playing h3 to kick the bishop back. Sure, whatever. He plays queen goes to g5. He wants to exchange queens because, you know, his king is in mortal danger. We're not going to exchange queens. White plays bishop f4. And he's trying to hit this knight, and I think he wants to play bishop... I'm sorry, knight goes to d2 next to finally develop a piece. The problem is, as you can see, by playing bishop f4... It kind of locks the queen over here. Uh-oh, h3, queen only has one square. G, and now the dominoes are starting to fall. Take, take, take. I think this is rather amusing. It's move 24. White has one piece developed. It's the queen. Rest of his army is sleeping, and his king is about to die. Check. Check. Let's finish this off. Sacrifice the knight to open the h-file. Take the queen. You see this? I, this is just picture perfect. All of black's pieces are at, Okay, there's one rook not in the party. The entire white army is not in the party. They never had an active rule in this game. Even though white was up material, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't count if your pieces aren't doing anything. And it especially doesn't count when you're about to get checkmated. Let's back up. Back way, way, way up. In the game, white played f takes e5. What would have happened had he played this? What's incredibly interesting is that black had played basically the best moves up until here. With the exception of one. One choice. And instead of being winning, black is in one of those dynamically equal games, if you can believe it. It looks scary as heck, but let's look. Castle kingside. F takes e5. Yeah, lots of undevelopment. Knight takes e5. We've seen a very similar position to this, where we had all these e-file dangers coming on. Uh, the difference is, again, if you look up here... <laughs> um, black is down two pieces and he doesn't have that bishop here on c5 adding to the attack um, let me just show you the best move h3 and now from here if we were to simply retreat the king is able to come out here and white might even be able to survive this black is down a lot of material and this is kind of the danger. This is always in the back of your mind. Geez, sure, I'm doing everything Smithy tells me to do. I'm developing all my pieces. I'm doing all these threats. I'm focusing on uh, time above everything else. But all of a sudden, I make one, you know, obvious move, and I'm no longer winning. In fact, I might be losing the game. It's not very... Uh, it almost seems unfair. Um, and it kind of it kind of is. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie about that. Um, when with time, it is probably the most powerful element in all of chess, but it's the most fleeting. It's the hardest to use. One inaccuracy throws everything away. I'm not going to get onto this uh, into too detail. The correct move is rook takes d2. And in some ways, it makes sense just because we're not trying to save material. We're trying to cash in with time. Oh, we're going to play rook d1. What are you going to do? In fact, white really has two moves in this position. No, he's, obviously you're going to take the rook. How are you going to take the rook? Knight takes d2. Uh, unfortunately, after knight goes to d3 check, 
uh, you just lost the queen, and uh, white is completely losing. And I want to emphasize this, time goes both ways. If you're way behind in time, uh, it's very hard to find um, the correct moves as well, right? So um, that can be a comfort. White still needs to play very accurately. King takes d2. It looks absolutely chaotic. We bring in the rook. The king slides over here. Check. There's one move for white. And I've probably just given it away by the fact that I'm pausing here. Uh, you might naturally think bishop takes d3, but that honestly doesn't really make sense, does it? Because you're losing the queen. So if we're going to lose the queen, let's lose the queen this way. And then after rook takes, bishop takes d3, finally developing a piece here on move 21. The problem for black is, sure, we got the queen, but again, white has two rooks and a knight and a bishop. So I guess that's two rooks and two knights for the queen. The best that we can do is just do a little perpetual check like this. Back and forth, back and forth. The problem is that we had sacrificed all of our pieces. There's nothing left to actually do a checkmating attack. Let's back up. Way back up. It's actually here. It turns out f5 is not the best move. It turns out queen goes to h4. And there's a crucial difference here. Okay, we got the g3, queen e7. So how is this different from the, the position, the game that we just saw? So in the game, we had included f5 and queen, um, queen goes to e3. So let me see if I can find that. So we had this position versus this position. Okay, so this, uh, mm, sorry, this is hard to do. Yeah, this is the game that we just looked at, and the best move is this queen h4, queen goes to e7. So keeping the f-pawn here, keeping the queen on e4. How does that change things? Well, the main idea here is after c takes b4, knight f3 is check, and we picked up the queen. The queen just is uh, completely hanging. That's pretty easy. You can't do this. Well, the queen is pinned. And there's no um, g-pawn to take that. That is, if we were to just play queen goes to e7, take knight f3 doesn't work because after g takes f3, uh, the queen's defended. By throwing in the check, check, boom, bang, c takes before knight f3, it's check, there is no g-pawn to take back, and we're still to pick up the queen. That's wonderful. Okay, f takes e5. So in the game, uh, we, were, we played knight takes e5. Sorry, in the game, um, we were able to play bishop c5 and hit the queen. But the queen's not on e3 anymore. Sorry, let me just back up. Just so that way you can see what I mean. So in the game, after f takes e5, we had bishop c5 hitting the queen, right? Okay, okay. Okay, so let's back up. So in the correct line, after bishop d2, where we go check, boom, bang. F takes e5. We don't have this move to save our bishop. So what do we do? Here is where f5 comes in. Notice that we actually have a problem. Not only is this bishop hanging, this bishop is hanging as well. f5 protects our bishop, and it hits the queen, forces the queen to move. En passant doesn't work. Whoops, you lose the queen. Okay, so we don't have to worry about that. We have to move the queen somewhere. Where do you want to move the queen? Uh, computer wants to move it to c2. Okay. The problem with c2, well, we're going to end up, we take the pawn with check. Let's say he does something like this. We're going to castle. And this position is so incredibly amazing. Takes. Look at this down two whole pieces, it absolutely doesn't matter. We're able to crash on through. Do you see how scary this is for white? Sure, white is up material, but look, open file, open file, open file, bishop staring down, knight ready to jump in. Black is so incredibly active, white cannot hang on. Let's see, knight goes to d4. All right, 
attacking absolutely everything. What do we do as white? Okay, we got to move the queen somewhere. In my mind, there's two moves. We got c4 to defend this guy, or we go to d1 to defend that guy. Uh, intuitively, I always thought that queen goes to d1 makes the most sense. Just, you know, get the queen out of the way, spend, what is it? It's move 18. We've moved our queen a thousand times just to bring it back to d1. Okay, maybe that isn't the most intuitive. And what's um, the easiest move here for black is going to be queen goes to e4. We're now threatening knight goes to c2. We're also threatening this rook, and we're keeping the pin on the bishop. In fact, it's not even clear uh, what you're going to do as white. Like, what, what move are you going to play this? Yeah, you just lost the piece you can't recapture. Are you going to do this? Uh, you just lost the rook, uh, and your knight's attacked. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're just losing everything. Okay, so queen d1 doesn't work. What about queen c4? Trying to defend the bishop this way. Um, it's very similar. We're going to end up playing bishop takes, and after knight takes e2, can't take with the queen, obviously, right? Knight takes e2. Knight f3 check looks really tempting. Knight f3 is a good, not bad. It's the same idea, though. Queen goes to e4, attacking the rook. What do we do with the rook? Knight f1. Sorry, um, rook f1. But there's the other idea. When we brought the queen goes to e4, it's not just this. We're also looking at that square. Oh my, we've got check, hits the queen, and we're hitting the rook, completely winning. I absolutely, I love seeing things like this. You know, it, it makes my heart beat fast. It's just incredible seeing um, the white player entirely focused on trying to win material the entire time. And then for black um, to sacrifice material, but it's not the normal sacrifices that we think of. You know, the bishop takes f2 or bishop takes h7, the Greek gifts. Rather, it's letting white waste time taking pieces where black is able to finish development use the open lines, and attack. Breathtaking. Wonderful. Now that said, I'm fairly certain there are some people out there going, Smithy, that was amazing. Great job. I'm not a 2500 rated player like the black player in this game. How can you expect me to play these moves? I hear you. In fact, I distinctly remember being around 13 to 1400 and losing a game in this exact line. After this e5, queen goes to e4. So there's uh, a much easier option, uh, kind of the classical option, in fact. Instead of taking the pawn in this position, uh, we're going to do something else. And we do have to be careful, our knight is hanging, so we have to do something to address that knight. But instead of taking the pawn, uh, which the computer loves, by the way, the computer loved virtually all of black's moves, it was just um, that move order nuance between f5 and uh, queen h4, queen e7. That was the only slip up that black played. Otherwise, a plus, black, you're absolutely amazing. This is a dream game. So taking, uh, so this is a long way of saying there's nothing wrong with taking this pawn. A much easier option, though, is the old line with d5. It defends the knight here, this way. And then after it takes, bishop goes to um, e6, uh, we're fully developed. Well, Basically, right? We've got three pieces developed to white's one. And I remember, again, thinking, hold on, can't white win a pawn after takes and takes? And yes, white can win a pawn. But let me show you the stats. Uh, the stats are heavily in black's favor. Black is winning over 60% of the time. And I hope that's obvious, because this is very similar to the game in the sense that white only has the queen developed, open center, black is ready to castle, black is ready to finish development, all just for one pawn? Remember, in the game, black essentially sacrificed two pieces and for a huge lead in time. Just one pawn? Yeah, black is doing sensational here. You have to be careful. Back up. Oh, I hope, hope I didn't give that one away. Because there is a tricky move here. The tricky move isn't to take the pawn. Uh, the tricky move is this funky thing. I know, right? And this is, you know, where it feels like you can follow all the opening principles and get sucked into a trap. Because it seems like, okay, uh, if I take the bishop, uh, I'll frig, I'm just you know, like losing everything. Okay, that doesn't work. Um, if I defend, that doesn't work either. 
It's like, oh, shoot, am I losing a pawn? And so the short answer is yes, but the longer answer is you shouldn't care because the opening isn't about developing. We were ready to sacrifice this pawn, right? Woohoo. So who cares if it's this pawn or this pawn? If we're going to, you know, increase our lead in time, woohoo. So don't um, freak out and worry about it. Instead, we're just going to take the pawn. And then let's say he does that. That's fine. We've got this lovely um, check. Hits the bishop, hits the queen, boom, boom. And the problem is, sure, white can win the rook. We're going to take this guy, pick up the rook, completely even game. Uh, we're still ahead in development, uh, even material, life is fine. And so you just need to remember, essentially, um, if you were to reach this position. One, um, you could study just a little bit, you know, if um, you're prepared. Okay, i got, I got to be careful here. If you're watching this series, you're probably an amateur adult improver, which is fantastic. You don't need to study a lot of things, right? <laughs> I hate to gatekeep, gatekeep people to think that you need to have this memory of all these ideas, right? General idea. The big thing is that if you're to get into a position like this, A, don't worry about the material, right? That's absolutely fine. And then just be in particular, if you just remember this one idea with queen goes to b4 check, everything is fine. Life is good. But more importantly, again, I want the overall lesson. White in the game, let's just go through it very, very quickly. Spent the entire time. Okay, he's moved his queen, moved his queen. Look at this. He's going to win some pieces. Good job, white. And what is black doing? Developing. Um, attacking every opportunity. And this huge lead in time has now led to a point where white has nothing. White, white has to throw away a piece, throw away a clear piece just to stay in the game, and black is still crushing it. Why? Because time is so, so important. And so really try and lean in on that. Whew. Let's just look at that finish one more time because it's always... Wonderful mm. to see such an ending. Look at that. This is art. So that's that. Hopefully you enjoyed that. More importantly, hopefully you, you, you learn. Again, another example of time being the most important thing in the opening. I think I've exhausted everything I want to say about this game. Um... Like, subscribe, do all that. That'd be fantastic. Let me know your thoughts, and I will try and find more games that are as amazing as this and make videos about them. Or if you have ideas about what you want me to see, again, let me know. Always open to suggestions. Otherwise, I'm Smithy Q. Check out the blog, smithyq.blogspot.com. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.